I saw the BRICS nations really taking a lunge forward into this next year. You're going to see it start with Europe. You're going to see it start with other nations. Oh, that's December last year. And then you're going to see the yeah. financial norms and values we've known shake and change. They're going to begin to shake and change dramatically and radically, okay? And when this happens, the way people built ivory towers are the way they've always done it and the way it's always been, and oh, don't worry about this or that, nonsense. It's going to get wild out there. But here's what I want to say. In that same understanding, there will be a great awakening that takes place in every area that the kingdom of God offers. And what I mean by this is, I heard these words about BRICS. BRICS would take a step forward mightily in this coming year and beyond. And then I heard, but their plans will ultimately not go how they expect. In other words, there's going to be an epic failure as well. An epic failure for what happens wow. with BRICS. So, okay. Wow. Is that the one you're thinking of, Mary? It must that was, be. Yeah, that was exactly the one I said. Okay. Well, let me, let me look right at you guys. Let me look right at us here today. So I, I'm glad we brought that clip out because that's back. I saw the, the subtitle was December. Now, people think I remember everything I prophesy all the time, and I don't. You know, we have prophetic words, and we have a responsibility to the body of Christ to just share what we see, and we're watchmen. And many times we've had many of you write in and say, do you remember this word you gave? And quite frankly, we don't help us remember everything because there's so much that comes out of these broadcasts. When you do it every day for uh, several years, there can be a lot that comes out. So if you ever see a word that we give be fulfilled, please let us know about it so we can honor the body of Christ and help people. I am not here to pull bunnies out of a hat or to prove things to people. I'm doing it because I believe to be forewarned is to be forearmed. To be forearmed is to pray, and you can pray and begin to change these narratives. Now, I believe the fact that we saw this back in December, I remember this word now, and praying about it in my home. I was walking around praying. I believe that now things are coming out. And so I can't go into the details I have about this, but I've had people reach out to me privately saying, these nations say they're being backed by a certain, you know, gold currency or gold standard, and they are not telling the truth. And so there's a lot going on with that that we've got to realize means they won't hold up. And there's some other entities and powers that be that are not impressed with this narrative. So that the translation of that could be that the United States has more time in this economic field. Now, maybe our economy rumbles and collides downward. But if these nations are in a difficult place, and if the wicked lizard overlord agenda over at the World Economic Forum uh, does not get its way, and we can keep the economy buoyant, even though, even though they're just printing stuff like it's going out of style, which is not the way you do it. I mean, it's all fake, right? Uh, I'm, rem <laughs> I'm reminded of Rocky Thru, and he's like, all fake, meatball. It's all fake, <laughs> you know? Nobody, okay. And so what we got to realize is, though, I do believe we got a little more time than maybe we think, but I'm telling you, the plug could get pulled. Things could happen, but I have hope in my heart. I have hope for you. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is bringing favor and victory in the middle of all of this, and that's what we're seeing. Now, I have another unction on me, and maybe I'll go to the whiteboard in a little bit, but I was praying about this. I was thinking about it, and I believe that if we begin to see the former leader of the United States step back into that threshold and get back into that place. One of the things I think that we're going to see, oddly enough, by way of um, response to that is weather. Mm -hmm. Weather. And you say, what do you mean weather? Weather, 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 it's cold out or hot, right? That's a, um, what do you call that, homophone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Use two different, anyway, never mind. <laughs> so weather... <clears throat> A weather deal, I believe there is, is, I'm bringing it up because it could be a weather, and I, I hate to drop this word, but I think so, a weather manipulation. In other words, I think there's going to be a catastrophic weather pattern issue that will happen within the following year of him if he goes back in. Now, we got to pray. None of this is set, and I believe the Lord is allowing that where people are not realizing exactly how it's going to go. So we depend on him leading up to this election and everything else. And we've got to do it. I know who I want to go in, but I just want to say, we got to begin praying and stand on that. I know God's will. I see that. 
And God's will does not automatically come to pass. I don't care what people say about it. God wills that all men be saved, and yet many of them are not. And you see things happening in the culture, and many things do not go how they are planned to go. And so when it comes to this, one of the things I saw that would be a sign, a wonder, and even a difficulty is that if he goes in, I saw like weather manipulation happening. And you say, what are you talking about? Can they manipulate the weather? Now, many of you are already commenting, yes, harp, things, they seed clouds. Well, here's the other thing. They actually have shown this stuff to the public without saying that's what they're doing. You know that, right? Like they've shown this stuff on TV programs. They've shown this stuff on different platforms and even shows in the past where they say, oh my goodness, look, here's a cloud. It's going in the sky and then suddenly it rains and all. You recognize they can do this. And if they can show it passively about something that's not fully related to this, I'm telling you, they got the tech to do some pretty crazy stuff. As a matter of fact, let's show that clip from a TV show called Top Gear. Elijah, we have that, right? The clip from Top Gear, where they're talking about NASA and the way they put clouds out in jet propulsion. But it turns into a cloud, manifests into a cloud in the sky that another state, he jokes about, will be able to see or experience rain out of. And then something crazy happens in this clip. Let's take a look at this. Weather manipulation. Here we go. This is the shuttle's fuel tank. The The noise levels became acceptable. Stop her right here. Okay, I want to talk about this for a second. So what's happening is this is a NASA rocket program and all this, and I, I don't have all the deep insights to it, but here's the point. They're blasting out this jet propulsion, and it's like, what is it? It's like H2O they're blasting in the air, some kind of you know combination of elements. They're blasting it into the air, and you're seeing it's, it's like hydrogen, oxygen, all that. They're just blasting it into the air, and here's what's happening. It's vaporizing. But notice he's got these earphones on. That it's so loud. He says it's the loudest thing he's ever heard, basically. But it's creating something. Now, if you'll pay attention, you're going to begin to see what it creates. Now, it's louder than he can, can even explain. This is from Top Gear. But notice where this goes. Just pay attention to it. Hey, um, I couldn't even hear myself. This is the loudest sound you could possibly conceive. And Look at as that. it turns out, Look at that. the cleanest... Does that look familiar? Now, the most amazing thing is that that cloud up there, which was generated Stop by it. the air. That cloud. No, he's, he's calling it. That, that's a cloud in the sky. Does that look like a, anything other than a cloud? Does it look man-made? The answer is no, it doesn't. It looks like any cloud you would see. Now, if he can do this on a program and they show you this on television, and this is probably 20 years old, if they show it to you here, what else can they do? Now watch what happens next. Engine. It's just a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. It's water vapor. And in about an hour's time, someone in Mississippi is going to get wet washing. It will actually rain. Look what happens. Wow. I told you. Yeah, it's raining. The man of rain. That's unbelievable. Oh. Lester's playing God. It's waking its own weather. So, okay, let's come back. I want to look right at you. Now, here's what we recognize. What did we just witness? Well, we witnessed kind of an off the cuff, you know, major technological marvel of how they do things with NASA, jet propulsion, all that. But it created a cloud right on TV for us. And people are like, huh, can they really do these kind of things? They just did it. They did it. Now, imagine what they could do unfettered. Imagine what they do with all their technology. Imagine what they could do if they really wanted to create something. If they can do that, they can do things that are probably beyond our comprehension. Involving weather, maybe even hurricanes. Maybe they can stir stuff up. And they've talked about this stuff since the Vietnam War. This stuff is out there. Now, I have an inkling, an unction. And my sense is this that there will come a time that should the the former leader get in, that we will see this type of narrative all over, especially in this nation, 
Now, I, I believe it involves seashore, the shorelines. I believe it involves intense weather. I believe it involves cells and supercells and things that are breaking loose at an unprecedented level. And this is their mechanism for blaming climate change. You know, that wicked tree-hugging religion where they, they worship creation like Romans forbids. They worship creation rather than the creator. The point is, is when we're looking at this mess that's happening, there is an agenda behind it. And the mechanism is now you're seeing them spraying things out into the atmosphere or in space, so to speak, so they can block sunlight. Now they're going to begin to manipulate weather. They want to begin to do all this stuff so they can induce the very stuff they're lying to us about. And a lot of people today are like, we just really got to go with the flow and protect the environment. I got a news for you. It says in 1 Peter that the elements will one day burn with fervent heat. It will melt. The earth is going to melt with fervent heat. Not by the, uh, the, these, these twisted people that are walking around saying, oh, it's going to happen. Oh, we got climate change. Climate change is an existential threat to our way of life and all that. Yeah, because of you. Because of your mindset with it, that's not the truth. The bottom line is, is we're looking at what's going on. We realize they are manipulating things and then matching that manipulation to a narrative that creates the lemming think, the group think of the culture to say, oh my goodness, that's exactly what's happening. And now, as we said before, suddenly you got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. You got people thinking they're a turtle. The next thing you know, you got cats and dogs living together. What is happening in the world? And the world's going to chaos and the church goes well nothing to see here we need to really begin to recognize what's coming now i believe that's coming it can be revealed absolutely exposed and turned through prayer these are some of the things that i'm noticing in the world but with all the damage that's going on have no fear because the good old lizard overlord world economic forum is here klaus schwab and his gang of perverts they're coming to tell you how you will live your life and they're going to begin to do that so the gang of perverts are coming together and they have their own religious leaders can you imagine it the gang of perverts the gang of wicked lizard overlords has their religious icons that are probably here to save the day and you know how they're going to save the world by puffing on people Peh. you watch this check this video out right here here we have the world economic forum the wef shaman the shaman of the world economic forum sneezing on people and that is probably how they think they will save the world what a bunch of clowns let's watch this <coughs> Oh yeah, cow dung, I sniff it, oh, like a parrot, it's feathers in my nose, I'm walking cross stage, oh, it's like a dart. Shot through the heart, baby, you're to blame, you had a shaman, a bad name, yeah, I played my part, and you sneezed on me, right, it's, look at this, nasty, McNasty, I give it to you too, Puh. Demons, demons for you, demons for you, demons for you. Was that too much? I, I just got to recognize <laughs> something about this that, you know, let me, when I'm looking at you, you realize that in a world of stupidity, a world gone mad, absolute idiots gone to sea, we got somebody shooting invisible paintballs, or I should say spitballs at people. And uh, actually, we could just call them little demonic, you know, clusters. They're just sending little demonic air clusters to you. Little demonic air cluster for you, demonic air cluster for you, demonic air cluster for you. Let's all just worship nature, right? So people say, that's offensive. If you're offended by that, you should be. These are the stupid people trying to run our world into the ground. These are the people that are worshiping nature, forgetting God, mutilating our children, and running this world into the ground. They're trying to steal your economic future. They're trying to steal your liberties, your freedoms, through surveillance and all these things. And then they get these idiotic moments where you get people all dressed up in feathers and whatnot, sneezing on people with a demonic impartation. Yay, World Economic Forum, what's coming next? The bottom line is, is you got all these people that are walking down the avenue. You know what we need to do? We need to begin to arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord in just one believer is enough to stop all the madness. Now, look, I'm not against people. Not at all. But I am against this really stupid, sw uh, just slimy, pervert agenda they got going on. And these people are scumbags. That whole panel there? Scumbags. It was the scumbag panel. And they needed their shaman to spit upon them with demon air. Now, when we're looking at this, 
we've got to also recognize that the Lord wants us to live, move, and have our being. Now, I'm very concerned about where we're headed. I'm very concerned about things, but I have great hope. I'm telling you, there is a hope. I sent some, some juice on this, some voltage by the Spirit of the Lord that will break people out of this wicked agenda. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the board. I'm going to try to share some thoughts here that I see. Okay, here we are at the vision board yet again today. Uh, I want to share something with us about this thought of weather. Weather. Now, we talked about the eclipse uh, just yesterday. We got into that. Uh, that signs are signs. There's a lot of sensationalism going on. But with this also, I believe, should, should this go back in, okay? Number one, there's a major move that they want to do this. I'll just say this for those of you that have ears to hear and eyes to see. They want to do something on this Jan date where they begin to overturn. That's a real conversation. They're already planning for the victory. They say, if this has victory, then we're going to stand up and overturn it. So they're going to do what they're accusing everybody else of doing. This is nuts. And you're looking at this picture and you're seeing this, but one of the big things I think that will manifest, this is going to be in the public. But everything they've caused, they're going to launch when... And if, and we got to pray that he gets in there. But the big thing is going to be this. Okay. That's going to be a big one there. What, what do I mean by this? Well, I believe it's going to be in the form of fires. Okay. Fires that'll come. I believe it's going to be in the form of, you know, tornadoes or big storms. I believe it's going to be in the form of, you know, hurricanes and crazy winds that'll happen. It's going to be in the form of oceanic tsunami type activity, earthquakes underground. You're going to start to see earthquakes underground, um, which there's an argument that that can be caused also and induced by humanity. Uh, there's people that have gone on record saying that they can do this kind of stuff all the way from, get this, all the way from Antarctica. Hey, Joseph. Yes, ma'am. What is the purpose, do you think, that they would use weather in this scenario? I think it's a distraction narrative because no, um, no different than the way that they did the Mark of the Beast precursor practice serum, the whole agenda with that. Mm -hmm. If they can offset or get him or the nation off balance, they will keep control in many different sectors. Now, I remember when, um, I think it was DeSantis, he stood up and he said, hey, we're not going to have this, that, or the other thing. And the record, the record year for hurricanes that have ever hit that state blasted through there. And that's, that's almost two years ago now, a year and a half ago. And I'm talking, it decimated the coastline. I remember like Fort Myers, Florida, all that just got just hammered. And I thought he just made a statement and then within a week or two weeks, within a month, there was a major response with weather. And now, I know I'm getting out here a little bit. This is a little tinfoil hat, isn't it? But I do sense there's something to this, that if they can punish or keep off kilter or distract enough with a major weather event where everybody's going, oh no, they can continue shuffling through with their, their agendas. They can make things happen. In other words, that's why we say when there's big news, make sure you keep your eyes on the small news. Mm -hmm. When there's big news, never forget this. We say this all the time. Keep your eyes on the small news when there's big news happening. Because many times the big news is a false flag. It's a smoke screen for something else they're trying to usher through. They're trying to usher it through. So um, a good example of this would be, man, you know, when, uh, you know, the one guy, the Manchurian, when his kid, you know, had that computer laptop got found out. All this stuff's coming out. And suddenly, the next thing we know, there's all this focus on the trial of the former leader. We notice there's all this focus on what's going on. Or when they're trying to usher things over to the dancing pervert nation over across the pond, uh, you know, the one that's getting in uh, conflict with the hammer and sickle nation and all that. And you're seeing that. And they're trying to usher more resources there. They're trying to distract. 
you often see major events and then major things happening just quietly as everybody's focusing on some celebrity, some royal, mm -hmm. something else, and they try to usher these things in. Um, even the fact like, uh, who is the friend star who died? Um, what did that guy's name was? Matthew Perry, right? When he died, there was a whole lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh no, and it was sad and tragic, yes. But the real truth is there was something going on I, uh, with other nations, the way that they're hiding and doing all this stuff. So yeah. I believe a lot of this, this type of thing is one part of this. Now, we have not seen the last of the airlines either in this. Let me, let me just go over here. I'll write it up here. That was a good point you brought up, Mary. Good question. Airlines. Um, I'll just say this. Air craft from a variety of industry, mainly the public sector, but this will be more and more through the military and all this. Um, what we've not seen yet is, man, I hate saying this. Help me, Jesus. Please pray for me. Is um, notable. Monumental. Crashes. Notable and monumental where these kind of things really start to catch the attention. And it'll only be notable and monumental because of the, um, I guess, the amount of them. Just how many. In other words, there won't just be one, there will be several. Okay? That's what I sense happening. And you're going to see more and more of this stuff falling apart, things taking place, uh, new stringent rules for uh, airlines and all that. And we're seeing it. We, it's a word we shared over the last two years and we're seeing more and more of it i believe the shipping industry will come back to the surface again there's going to be many different things that happen but the big thing i saw and i went on on the record yesterday about this and i'll just go here one more time about this today is that this word about satellites and i'm going to say it again and i believe that we're going to hear this word a lot because it involves many of them Okay, one, two, more. I believe it's just going to be this. And this is going to be a, you know, it's a hacking thing. It's going to be that cyber word. <laughs> and God forbid a cyber Monday like this. But I'm telling you, there's going to be something more involving this. This is going to be a major thing. And this is that deal where I saw or said the words that a person would be involved with this. They'd almost be a part of it behind the veil, causing some of it, and then come as the savior. Now, yesterday I wrote that it would be maybe an Elon or some tech company. But here's the one thing I didn't write that I saw and I just, I didn't get to it. And that's this. Get ready for this. The government. What's that one song? Who can take your money? The government. The government can, right? So you see this. And I believe that that's a lot what's going to happen here, that there's a major part of this involved with government. Now, this is why also I got into, I'm just telling, there's something about the satellites. We're going to hear more about it. Hacking, tech stuff. They're going to blame it on things. You know, and of course, since we're at it, we might as well just not forget or leave out. <laughs> Let's not leave out the, uh, you know, we can't leave out a good crisis like they're going to bring out called solar flares. Which is really code word for, you know, EMP, which is really code word for uh, control. Which is really code word for we don't want them to win. We're going to win. And this could all, any one of these issues, whether they go down this road or they go down this road or they begin to say, well, we got in here. We're going to kind of create a major perfect storm of crisis uh, through weather manipulation and all this. But any one of these or a combination thereof you know, it creates a lot of chaos and it's going to create stuff that will always allow the Savior to come in. 
And the Savior would be, don't worry, we've got this all figured out. The government can. And so that's something that we got to consider when we're looking at this. Now, why am I bringing this out? And why does it sound unique? Because we've got to pray. And I want to pray in just a moment. I think it's important. I it's important. Question for you. Yeah, go ahead, Mary. So in the beginning of this clip, or broadcast, you, you played a clip about it. Elon saying he's against censorship. Right. However, if he teams up maybe with the government and satellites, you think that's just him playing bluff? Like, I don't believe in censorship, but yet he does so that he can get his satellites. Well, yeah, I don't know that it's... I think that there's a lot of what we call the fireman syndrome, where somebody lights the fire, Mm -hmm. and then they show up on the other side of the building with a bucket of water saying, I'm here to extinguish the fire. They Mm -hmm. created a problem so they can be the solution. And I'm not saying he's that. I have mixed sense about him. He has definite occultic ties. He's got some terrible things he's involved with. But this feels bigger than that to me. In other words, whoever crashes the whole thing, they'll have something ready to bring out. They say, don't worry, use this now. And it's going to be okay. What I mean is, so for example, let's say it's a satellite system goes down. Let's say that uh, they claim solar flares and there's power outages. But don't worry, we've got the answer for you whether it's a new technology or a governmental scenario. You know, and the other thing is, we'll go to the board. Nothing else to share. I'm forgetting the economic little scenario here. The economics, when we're looking at this, when we're looking at this scenario with economy, e-commerce, all of it, This thing about Bitcoin is fascinating. And it's a word, you know, before I knew what this stuff was or any of it, I I guess four years ago, I did a broadcast where I said, they're going to try to bring out a new digital type of coin. I'll have to find that word. I shared that word. I remember that. And that's going to be what they're going to try to bring to the forefront. I think eventually they will push this into place. Uh, This is where you get into the central bank, digital currency, which people are starting to realize is more and more mainstream all the time. I don't think this is going to come as quick as they would want unless they just crash everything. But, you know, the only one I've ever seen, and please don't go investing just because you hear me say something. But again, I've only seen this one really last uh, or some form of this one. And that's XRP or something tied to it. And I don't even understand this stuff, okay? So I'm not like a financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do. Please don't go do crazy stuff. This stuff, you could get into it and it could crash and then come back. Who knows? But I do see something with this one. And I've seen this for a few years. And if you've followed me for a while, you know I've talked about that quite a bit, that I believe that has some juice on it. But this is going to be just like all this, all of it. All the printing, all the stuff they're doing is just like all the other narratives. And this itself is going to be another you know, fireman scenario where ah, we crashed it, but don't worry. Now we're here and Klaus will be like, welcome to the novel. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be saying, you know, everybody needs to get on their new plan. And really it's going to be a lot like the red dragon nation. That's a social credit system. Now I don't think we're there yet. We've got a lot we can do to push back against this. And I actually feel very encouraged. I really do. Like something good's happening. Yeah. Can you feel that, Ali? Oh, yeah. Talk to me. I, I know we've been praying. We've been kind of leaning into the Holy Ghost recently, and it just feels like something good is happening. And it, and I'm even though all this crazy stuff is going on, it's like I really do feel the joy of the Lord. I really feel like there's strength in it. And I do think the same way God preserved Noah yep. in the flood, I think he's going to do the same thing with our families. I think he's going to preserve us in this time. And I think it's going to be good. You had a word about that yesterday because we were talking about, and and this is something I want to mention again, is that of all the things we've ever done, mm-hmm. this thing about, so we're talking about the solar eclipse, right? Yes. I'm so thankful to my friends who really have a better beat on it than I do. I just have a prophetic sense mm-hmm. um, where, you know, my friend Troy Brewer, he he can break that down. You're like, oh my gosh. He's like, oh man, this means this and this and this and this. And I'm like, how did I not see that? And Troy's brilliant. He's prophetically brilliant. And there's many other guys like that. They're just really good about that space. But where I am with it is I see it like a sign and I kind of navigate this stuff by the spirit of the Lord. And I do see things in the natural. I, I, I can whittle that down. But so here we have this eclipse and we we're talking about it yesterday. This eclipse on yesterday morning's broadcast. 
And it's interesting because in that exact window of time, those 40 days between the April 8th eclipse leading up to 40 days after is like the day of Pentecost. That window of time, the Lord is going to have us Mm -hmm. at the seven churches in Turkey, the book of Revelation chapter one, two, three, when you read about the seven churches, we're going to each physical location. We're going there. And why are we going there? Because I feel a prophetic unction to do it. We're going with a few people. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going with, but we're going with Rick Renner. Yeah. There's a prophetic word on this, that we're doing that. Because whatever the Spirit says to the churches, let us have ears to hear. And I believe God is calling us there as a prophetic action. So number one, he called me to America's Mountain. Called me there. Called our family there. Called yeah. this ministry there. Um, I was going to say, I remember you talking about that and remembering... Uh, you saying, Danny, let's go up there. and Yeah, and, I took uh, Daniel up there. And, our um, son, Daniel. And how it's like how God has has had our family um, at very pivotal moments. Right. And um, like you were saying, yeah. with America's Mountain, now with Noah's Ark, especially with the time frame we're in, with the days of Noah. Word. It's what, That's what I'm so, looking at. So the seven churches, that's exactly what you're bringing out. But you gave a word on this, so I'll, I'll go there and then I want to ask you one more time what the word was. So oh, okay. get ready for that because I want to ask you. Yeah. We went, we're going there, and not only the seven churches and all that, but then on the heels of that, the Lord is sending us to the actual location of Noah's Ark in the nation of Turkey. Mm-hmm. And now people say, oh, I've been to Noah's Ark. No, you haven't. You've been to the museum. You, you've been to the place where they... They talk about it, but that's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual physical boat, the ship that Noah and his family were saved on through the great flood in the book of Genesis. They found the remains of it, and you can see it. They've done scans. It's there. The more they look, the more they find. There's altars. Now, if you watch the program or had Rick on for a week, well, we talked about that quite a bit and we looked at it. He's pointing at the, the graph. And if you haven't, go back on our YouTube channel and watch when I had Rick Renner on and we talked about Noah's Ark, the discovery of it. And he's explaining it and we're looking on the monitor and here's where it is. Well, we are going to go there to do a follow-up recording with Rick, but not only just do the recording, I have a prophetic assignment to be there. And I'm walking this through. So I've had prophetic words that my name, Joseph Z, it means uh, a last days because Z being last Mm-hmm. And then Joseph is a, a prophet that knew seven bad years were coming, but because of the anointing and what God called him to do, that Joseph anointing mm-hmm. had a supernatural buoyancy, a provision anointing in darkness. That's why I wrote Break Hell's Economy, Breaking Hell's Economy. Yeah. That's why we wrote Demystifying the Prophetic. Get the pre-order right now. It'll, it'll help you with this stuff. I'm telling you, God will talk to you. And uh, this is a biblically based book. It will really help you. You can pre-order right now at josephz.com. Right now, it's a pre-order, but please get it now. You want this. It'll be cheaper this way for you. Discount it. But that being said, going to Noah's Ark, yeah. and I believe it's a last day's prophetic word. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping people will stand with us and support us over this because we're going to be going. And it's it's not a, um, when you have a momentum and you're doing what God's called you to do and you got, you know, a wonderful audience like you guys watching. And thank you for commenting right now. Comment going red, you know, give us a shout out right now if you're doing that. But what I'm saying is you don't typically want to just go somewhere like that when you're in the middle of working and we're really doing this. So we're going to try to broadcast during the middle of that. Maybe I'll do it from hotels, whatever I got to do, but we're going to try to make that happen. But here's my point. I'm going by assignment and I'm hoping people will support us uh, as partners, and you go to josephz.com to do that. I hope you'll send us to Noah's Ark. I hope you're going to send us, just get behind us and partner with us for this prophetic now act that I know I'm supposed to do. So we're going. And when we go there, I believe it's a sign and a wonder that the days of Noah are here, the days of Nineveh and the days of Noah, Jonah with Nineveh and Noah with the Ark. And then I'm going to come to this word you had. So yesterday I brought up Noah's Ark and you said something, Allison. Yeah, I I was... Praying one day, I was really getting the Holy Ghost, and I, I, I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me, and I, I saw water, and I didn't even fully understand what this was, because this was before Noah's Ark. Okay, this before you knew about it? Before I knew about it. Okay. And, um, and the Lord said, I'm going to preserve your family during the days of Noah, the same way I preserved Noah 
during the flood, I will preserve your family. Wow. And the ark symbolizes a preservation during the time. Really? Yeah. Well, and here we go. And so that goes in line with this. Amazingly enough, uh, when we were at our, my grandmother's funeral, your great grandmother, and they yeah. asked me to preach for it. What an honor. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I hate to even call it a funeral. It was a homegoing celebration. She knew it, the Lord. It, it, it really felt like a reunion. Like, it I'm was. not just saying that. It was. Like, we were, everyone was just loving on each yep. other. And, and it, awesome it, was, it, it was it was wonderful. Yep. And it was during that same time that the Lord had me stand by a, a lake right. in Minnesota. And he said, America, the nations, they're going to experience a downturn. And I believe it's at that, if you've seen me draw the chart, and we will again, I'm sure soon, but where I draw the chart of 30, 60, 100 fold into a time of darkness difficulty, but then it's coming back. It might be different. It might not be what we had hoped, but it will change. And the new America is coming. The word I've had for two years now is the new America is coming. Mm -hmm. But the Lord spoke that word specifically to me during that moment when he said, you're going to see a downturn. Then a bald eagle started flying over my head. Yeah. uh, And I have video of that. And I thought, my goodness, the Lord's like, I want to talk to you. Doesn't always happen, but when it does, I pay attention. And he said, but those who are with you, you, your family, this ministry, people, they're going to find special favor. And then you bring along this word about the ark. And so I'm just thinking, well, maybe I, it's the last days. And I think that's part of it, that we're supposed to be there because it's the last days. Mm-hmm. But also, there's this prophetic word of protection, provision, location change. You know, they got in the ark and they went to another location. But it's that. I believe God's speaking that way. Is that how you see it, Allison? That really is how I see it and how um, I've just noticed certain people around us, how they've started to experience blessing in, in, in a way that should not happen. Yeah, it's and supernatural. It, it, it's supernatural and it's God. Yeah. It's the love of God. It just it just comes in and um, and it's just like blessing coming out of nowhere. I've noticed it's, it's happened with our partners. Yep. It's happened with our friends. Houses and, it, and lands. Like, it's just one after another. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's God saying, I love you. I'm protecting you in this time, and you're going to be okay. That's so cool. And so, yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. Is it that's what you see? Yeah, I, I saw that. And I, I really strongly believe that even though what stuff is getting crazy, I, I truly believe that God is saying, I love you. I'm going to take care of you. Mm. I'm going to protect you. Powerful. Everything's going to be okay. Powerful. Even though everything is raging otherwise, it's it's staying in his word, staying and looking at his face, staying with him yeah. and just honing in on him, focusing on him the same way David glanced at um, Goliath, but he was gazing at God. Yeah. The same stuff. That just You just focus on Jesus, even though this stuff is going on. That's amazing. And so, Mary, your thoughts? You got thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's the favor of the Lord. I mean, how many people through the uh, lockdowns and everything did we know that the Lord blessed like crazy yeah. when the world was like on pause and yeah. everything? The Lord's blessing is going to be there for his people, his protection, his favor. Yeah. Yeah. Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. Not always, it might be dark in Egypt, negative for the world, flood, difficulty, but it was light and Goshen in the Ark. Now, I also had a word or see the de- the prophetic connection to the seven churches that you're going to be visiting. Yeah. yeah. Um, you said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. That's it. And Jesus said that to all the churches, you know, at the end of, in, in Revelation. And um, that tells me that we can have ears and not hear. Oh, what man. the Spirit is saying, and there's significance in the, the seasons we're in, the times we're in, that we need to make sure we're he- hearing the Holy Spirit and word, that we have right. those ears that actually work. So just because you have ears doesn't mean you hear. Right. That's why we wrote this book. <laughs> I'm, tell you. I, I'm very serious about it. Um, this book is serious to me. Uh, it's, well, it's my whole life, my whole life up to this point. Everything I believe I could put into it, you know, and we may write more in the future, it's never complete, but I'll tell you, we put a lot in here on the prophetic and how to deal with it. You want to have ears to hear. You want to discern the signs of the times. You want to navigate through the experiences and not get swept away by the nonsense or sensationalism. I really encourage you to get this. It's a pre-order. I, you'll get it at a discount right now. If you go to josephz.com, you order it. It'll, as soon as we get the first shipment of books, uh, we will be sending these out first come, first serve. 
If you order it today, you will, you will be first in line to get these. I encourage you to really make sure that you order it today. Go to josephz.com. You can order this book right now. I'll tell you, it's going to help you demystifying the prophetic. And I think the subtitle says, Understanding the Voice of God for the Coming Days of Fire. I think that's strong. Yeah. Strong. I know. I was just thinking about something that the uh, Lord's been speaking to me about, about having the joy of the Lord. Wow. I think specifically, even recently, he, he's like, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on. And I think a lot of people need to focus on that too. Just getting getting into the joy of the Lord. Like, I'm blessed. I'm full of favor. I'm above and not beneath. I'm ahead and not the tail. And just getting in that in that joy bubble of yes. everything's going to be okay. So good. Ha, 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 my situations. <laughs> and just getting full of joy, getting full of laughter, and just laugh at your situations. I, I think it's powerful. And so. We really could have a longer run than we realize. Yeah. And we need a plan like it. Now, the Lord could come snap us all out of here today. Today. I mean, he could do it right now, today. Yeah. Throughout your whole day today, he could do it. He, but I believe we have more work to do. That's why we're calling yes. us a million for a billion. Mm-hmm. Can I add to what please, Kelly please just said? Yeah. Joy of the Lord is please. our strength. If you go to the original language, it says protection, yep. stronghold. So the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your protection. Yeah. You know, a stronghold is like that. That's awesome. Yeah. So. That's so awesome. Oh, yeah. So, that's so good. All of this. When the world's going crazy. It's his joy that's going to be our strength Come and on. also our protection. Mm-hmm. Joy of the Lord is our strength. That's out of Nehemiah. Mm-hmm. And we recognize Psalm 34. It says, when the righteous cry out, the Lord hears them, delivers them from all their troubles. Yeah. I like that scripture. This poor man called the Lord on the Lord and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all their troubles. Those who look to the Lord, Psalm 34 says, their faces are made radiant. They're never covered with shame. And God is saying the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very thrilled about what God's speaking. I don't have a sense of gloom, doom, hopelessness. I have a sense of great hope yeah. and anticipation. Mm-hmm. Man, let me, Allison, go ahead. Just pray for those. Reach your hand right out yeah. and pray. Pray for everybody watching right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for our partners yeah. and our friends and family right now. I just speak the blessing of the Lord over your households. And I speak to your children and your children's children right now. And I speak the joy of the Lord. I speak the strength of the Lord. Yes, Lord, I say yes to your word. Yes, in regards to provision and protection in this time. And I speak strength into you right now. Everything is going to be okay. And thank you, Jesus. You have exactly what you need in this time. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, the joy of the Lord in your home. Yes. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord the in joy Jesus' of the name. Lord. Thank you, God. Well, we just love you and we bless you. And we just want you to know that Z Ministries is here for you. And Joseph is here for you. And we're here. And we love you so much. So thank you for watching. Yeah. Well, and, let me, uh, yeah, yeah, Dad. Oh, Okay. Let me do this here. I just want to say this to you. If you've been watching, you've been with us some time um, looking right at you. I just want to say we love you and we're grateful to you. And I want to also thank our partners. If you've been with us a long time, maybe you're brand new. uh, Thank you. I mean, my family and I, this ministry, we really care about you. That's why we have a call team that calls you. And it's not a call center. We don't hire this out or farm it out with people that are on their smoke break and God bless people who got to do anything. But I'm just saying, we don't have people that are doing that come back in and then make their calls. You know, yeah, how you doing? You know, it's where we, you know, we love everybody. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you're somebody that's in that space. Listen, we love you. It's not about that. But I'm just saying, I want people that really are in tune with the Lord and they're reaching out to you because we care about you. We care about you. And if you want to join our partner family, I really encourage you to do it today. Go to josephz.com. I hope you do it today. We need your help. We really do. As a matter of fact, can I show the building real quick here? I want to show everybody this. This is important. We've had campaigns and things that are happening, but here's the building. You see this taking place, um, and this is just what we're working towards. And we got this. Uh, we paid it down to maybe about 600 uh, we're getting close to that mark. We've had to do a few things which brought the number back up, but we're, we're at about the 600 to getting it totally paid in full. 
But to do everything that you see here, and this is just a concept. It, it doesn't look nearly as good as what we're going to make it. But this is just a working concept that Danny, uh, Heather, and I's son made. When you're looking at this, this, all of it, with this, the building paid off and the remodel to get things going here and in the offices over here, about 1.3 million total. And that's the full enchilada. That gets everything done. And that still, at that price, is one third of what the building was purchased for, what we got it for. So we are way under the value of the building. It's so wonderful, but we want to be debt free. We want to owe no man anything. We want to knock this out. And I'll tell you, we'd like your help. If you want to sow towards this, help us with all the events. The best way you can do it is by partnering at josephz.com. I hope you will. I hope you'll stand with us. I hope you send us to Noah's Ark. <laughs> I hope you send us over there, but I really hope you'll stand with us to get this building paid down. We'll keep you updated on this. And um, there's so many more things I want to give you updates on with recent campaigns that we've actually finalized. And we've got some pretty cool things to tell our partners about. Um, and I'm going to figure out a way to do that really just for our partners, but it's important. So if you're a giver here and you've been a partner for a while, we want to be able to share some cool advances that God's been so beyond words gracious. God's been better to us than we deserve. He's been so good. I'm going to serve him forever. And uh, partners, thank you for helping us. We just want to be here for you. Let me look right at you and pray for you. I'm going to look right at you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I speak increase to you. I speak favor over you, your family, your going out, your coming in. I begin to release the healing power of God into your body. I release the healing power of God into your mind, your emotions, in every area right now. That right now, right now, I mean now, the Spirit of the Lord is touching your life and bringing favor and victory to you. The goodness of God is in you. The favor of God is in you right now. The peace that passes understanding. He's going to give you eyes to see, ears to hear, a discerning ability like the sons of Issachar during this time. God is with you. God is with you. If no one's told you today, we love you. We actually really care about you. And I, I do want to say to you, on a bad day, you really are anointed to be the best there is. The call team says that to some of you who are partners and and then uh, some of the call team tells me that, well, the partners finish your sentences now. <laughs> and uh, I'm just honored. We love you. And please, if you could, get this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. It's a pre-order right now. Get it at josephz.com today, right now. Please do it because I know it's going to help you. And I hope you uh, stand with us. We are standing with you. We love you. We care about you. And we'll be here every single day for you. Please, if you would, right now, watch this. In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, deja vu even, different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God. And I want to say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you to a place of clarity and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is gonna really help you. I encourage you to get your copy today by going to josephz.com.
I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning, or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it. And I hope you become a part of our partner family today.